So welcome to General Chemistry 1, Chem 1401 with Dr. Smith. So that's me. I've been here a number of years now. And I don't know, time flies when you're having fun. So this class has evolved a lot So from where it started to where, where it is now. And I'm sure with your suggestions, it'll change some more. But this is what we have so far. So uh, first thing I'd, I'd like to do is this attendance thing. The, uh, my wife is from Panama. And uh, I was calling her, you already know the story when, when I tell you this, I was calling her Anna this whole time, right? So she's from Panama, and I'm calling her Anna. And we go home. It's a big time to meet the parents and stuff, so it's been a, a year or whatever, and we're going home, visiting the parents. And my sister's there. And she was taking, ooh, Spanish class for a year or something, right? So she goes up up to my, well, at the time, girlfriend there, and she says, isn't your name Anna? And Anna says, yes, my name's Anna. So <laughs> this whole time, right? Calling her by the wrong name. So when I go through and name this, pronounce your name, make sure I'm pronouncing it right. And uh, I'm going to be calling on you a lot. I got to keep you awake in here. That, that's my job, right? So I'll be calling on you, and we'll be interactive as, as interactive as we can get you. We'll get you up to the boards and working questions. And so you don't want me calling the wrong name this this whole time. So if, if there's a Gabriella, she doesn't like she like Gabby better. Just let me know, right? So let's let's see if we can name this here. Uh, Danielle. Danielle's good? Yeah. Okay, Danielle Aguilar. Uh, Jorge Cantu? Jorge's right? Okay. Oscar. Duenas. Ooh, say it again. Duenas. Duenas. Yeah. Duenas. Oscar Duenas. Diana Garza? Dulce? <coughs> Dulce? Gomez? That's sweet, right? Dulce? That's not how they spell. Dulce isn't spelled like this, though. How do you spell it? D-U-L-C-E. This is close, though, right? So you're almost sweet. <laughs> Erica? Erevia. 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 Gosh, you'd think, you'd think I would learn this by now. Tegan Luke, Luke Meyer? Is that right? Luckmeyer. 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 And the Tegan part is right? Yeah. Melissa Munoz, Allison Pachicano, Allison Pachicano, Alejandro Ramirez, and you like Alejandro? Go by that. Um, there's no short for Alejandro, is there? But Alex, but Alex wouldn't be right. That's Alexander or something. Jonathan Rios, no John. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I go, I'm Chuck, Charlie, Charles. They all work, just not that movie. You know, I'm not even going to mention the name. That movie, that little walking monster. Uh -oh. <laughs> right? <laughs> not that. But all the rest work. Clarissa Rodriguez. Daisy? That can't be an honest pronoun. Daisy Saceda. She's not here, so I'm not going to know it anyway. But it's D-E-I-S-S-S-Y. That is Daisy? Yeah. Wow. Well, she's, she's not here. Annabelle Ruscia. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, it's another one of those double R's. Ruscia. <laughs> How do you say it again? Uru. Tia. Uru. Tia. Ooh, you pronounce the Tia. Uru. Tia. <laughs> OK. I have a Tita living with me right now. She's. Um, I lost. There it is. Christian Wood. And did I not name somebody? Okay. So, the. Uh, let's see. I don't want to get off schedule here. Okay. Attendance. The syllabus. Okay, that's the course outline. So that's this this first handout. Up on, up on top are the, the office hours. 
but really it's true man 99.9% .9 of the time I'm just like I'm really interested in what's going on with that rim fire and stuff and you know, our national forest where they're gonna burn down all those nice sequoias so it, you just walk in I'm just listening to the news or watching the news and that's really I think why the power of a small school before this I was at uh, Iowa State. I had 330 kids, floor to ceiling, right? 330. And I thought, man, because at graduate school, you're supposed to you know, do research. And I thought, how am I going to get any research done? I'll have 330 kids bothering me all day, right, on this general chemistry stuff. How many do you think came in all semester total? Right? Zero. Not one came in. You know, so don't, the, the advantage of coming to a small school is to come in and ask questions, right? And you do that and you'll, life will be so much easier and more efficient. It won't be frustrating at all. And you'll succeed, a higher rate of su succeeding, if you, if you take advantage of that, though. So up there listed are some of my office hours. They're in, some of those are in room 212, 212 METS and that's the room right next to my office. If you, you'll see lab. Lab, I don't even have Google News. All I can do is just, you know, I have something to say for the first five, 10 minutes, but after that, you guys are out doing your lab thing, and I just walk around looking to bother you because I have nothing <laughs> else to do. So if people come in and ask questions, it's, it's, it's nice, right? I feel like it's much more productive. So, so do that. That's a, and there's, there's plenty of space. It's just at the beginning where I'm kind of talking to people, but after that, you just come in. But the office is always there. It's right around the corner in room 214 Mets, right around this corner. It's the first door on, on the, well, if you're walking down that way, it'd be down the right. Okay. Um, the book is right here. And get a lot cheaper online okay you'll see what this is later but the uh, again this course has evolved you don't need to bring this to class every day and I'll explain why because people weren't bringing it to class so I had to change I had to change what we were doing here so but you will need it for the assignments okay so you will need it so if an ebook is cheaper there's no problem there right so that's that's your your call, but you you will need it. Okay. The other book is this. Now, this is an again an, an evolution, work in progress. Your lab book, required lab book, is in the back. Okay. But since people weren't bringing their book to class, and I'm going to show you something else here. What what this is all about? It's these course outlines. Every single thing that I'm going to cover is in here. So like on day two, you just open up to day two, and, and there it is. And you'll just follow along, take notes. All the questions are there, everything. OK? So used to go through the bookstore for this, but you know. So an advantage of having the chemistry club take this on is that they don't make a whole lot, but what we do make is enough to have helps, it's not required, evening help sessions in pretty much all of our classes. And the chemistry club, I'm sure, they've done it in the past, they'll do it again. They'll sub sandwiches or pizza or whatever, right, at these help sessions. But then also, we, it pays for uh, the expenses for us to, like last year, do this science fair thing at that elementary school, which is so much fun. Right, these little third graders having a science fair project, and we had our lab coats and all that. But get involved, and you'll take full advantage of all this stuff. Okay, so this and this lab book and the safety goggles are twenty bucks, and can't take a book voucher, right? Because it's chemistry club. So you can pick this up. Um, like today, after class, on Wednesday, during class or before class, during lab, anytime in lab, okay? So all the handouts, all that stuff is in here. 
these this is a special day, right? Because you, no one has this yet. And those handouts are actually in here. But okay. So the other advantage of this is I showed you that as we're as I'm work, working on here, I have a write on tablet notebook. Ah, oh, if it works. Right? So as I'm talking and writing, this is, this is all recorded. And where it all goes, you poor people in sports, now you can't get out of class. Because you go to Google. You're in soccer field in the middle of Dallas, Texas. Oh, man, I got out of Smith's class. Right? Well, you use your little smartphone there. Go to Google chemistry with... Uh, there it is. See, look how many times I've come up already. There I am, right? Okay. It's a YouTube channel. So you click on it. Okay. So all of our classes are here. Okay, so let's say you miss Wednesday or whatever, right? You'll just go down. You'll pick the playlist. Now, we're not up here yet, right? We'll be Chem 1401 fall 2013. So you'll click on it, and then, I don't know, you missed this day, right? It'll be whatever, because these, these are posted right after class. So you click on it, and there you go. Yeah, so what's the big deal? But you can, what's nice about this is you can see a problem. Oh, I missed it. See, like, you can, you can pause it, and once this loads itself, you can fast forward it over the question and see how problems are done, right, if you miss class. Or if you want to use it for a review, whatever, whatever the case is. Oh, there it is, right? So it's kind of nice. Okay. Oh. I don't know where it shows it, but man, I'm over 20,000 views and like 90-some subscribers. I've got guys in Ugaba or something like that, right? Because this is on the internet, so it's available to. I just got another subscriber this morning, all right? <laughs> so anyway, anyway, the point is, is that this has it's it's changing all the time, but it's been proving pretty pretty useful. So that's another thing you you can take take advantage of. So today's stuff will be will be posted later on today. So that was the book. The books. Let's see. Okay. So that's the text. So you flip it over. How am I going to determine your grade? It's there under the means of assessment. Okay. Your laboratory grades will be 15% of your grade. Nice thing about this class is that you're going to finish the lab report, all that stuff in lab. So once you leave lab, you're done with lab. It's kind of nice. So that'll be your, your lab grade. The uh, final exam, there's an hourly, there's four hourly exams. So we'll do a bunch of material, have an exam, bunch of material, have an exam. There'll be four of those. And that's where 55% of your, man, that's the majority of your grade. But the point is, I'll take questions off of those hourly exams, and that's your final exam. So you're, that's what you need to study for the final exam. So the, one of the last days of the semester, we'll have you bring in all of your old exams and make sure that you have all the right answers on them, right? Just to be ready for the final exam. The, uh, okay, so that's the exam. Now the quizzes. The quizzes, you're going to, again, it doesn't sound like a lot of fun, but I haven't heard, had anyone come up to me and say it was a bad idea. They've said that for the most part, People really don't say much at all, but you, you squeeze information out of them. And for the most part, they say this is helpful. Quiz every single day. Mm. <laughs> Quiz every single day, right? It's rough, but it really helps you because it gives you feedback as to where you're at in class the whole time, every single day, whether you understood the material, whether you should come in and ask or not. Whether you come in and ask or not, that's up to you, not up to me. But if you're not doing so great on that quiz, man, you should be over there and asking questions. Okay? 
So this quiz is at the beginning of class every day. So that's why the, your time is important. So I'm going on cell phone time. Cell phone time, everybody agrees. So at, if you can get here a little bit early, the quiz will be sitting out there. Fine, you can just take it, right? But the uh, first, you know, first five, eight minutes or whatever will be the quiz. If you come in a little bit late, I only have two minutes to take the quiz, right? See what I'm coming from? So you want to make sure you, you get here on time. And what is that quiz on? Well, it's on the, uh, well, before we get to it, I'm giving plus minus grades. That's the next box. But what is the quiz on? The quiz is on, take a look at the assignments. The quiz is on these problems that we're working in class. Okay? The quiz is on the homework. Okay? Well, what is the homework? If you look at the first column, that's day, uh, the class day. Okay? We're on class day number one. So that's orientation. If you go all the way across, there's nothing due. Okay? It's the first day of class. You can't assign anything. Okay? But Wednesday, that's day two. So for Wednesday, you have to read sections 1.1 through 1.7 and Appendix A, that's pages A1 through A5. So as you're reading that, you provide handwritten definitions of all bold and italicized words. So you come across some bold or italicized words, you give a handwritten definition of it. Okay? So if you keep going across, there's nothing else there, so that's the only assignment. So on Wednesday, you just come in, turn that in, that's your first quiz. Right? Because you've got really, nothing really to quiz you on yet. Right? So the quiz is just going to be that first assignment. And we always attach our assignments to the back of the quiz anyway for bonus points. Okay? So that'll be the first quiz should be pretty easy. You just have to turn in those handwritten definitions of all bold and italicized words. Friday comes along, that's day three. Now you have to read section 1.8. Again, handwritten definitions of any bold and italicized words. There's usually a few. Okay? And then you also have to turn in in the back of the quiz, all of this assigned material. And the exercises are located within the reading. So it's just a sample problem, and then you do it. And you just kind of follow the sample problem. That's what the exercises are. The rest of them are at the end of the, the rest of the assignments are at the end of the chapter. Okay. Okay. So we'll be working on all that, repeating it again and again and again, all the way through to the exam. Okay, yes? No, we'll, we'll be turning in everything. 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 Yep. All, everything that goes across for that day three, which is Friday, everything that goes across on day three, the bold words found in 1.8 and italicized, and then all that, exercises, conceptual problems, practice problems, gen, community skills, all that will get turned in attached to the back of the quiz for, I don't know, it's like half the quiz points or something. Okay. And the quiz will just be on one of those questions, pretty much. And these questions are pretty much on what we did here. Okay. Okay. The uh, evening before the exam, we'll have an optional help session. We follow what we did in the past, anyway. So we'll keep doing that for exam one, exam two, exam three. Finally, you hit exam four the end of the semester, and we'll take exam four, and then we'll review for the final, bring in all your old exams, and then you'll have a final exam. And the dates and times are on the bottom. And right, it'll just be off the hourly exams. Okay. And then let's see. Now if you flip over to the last page, it's the laboratory investigations. Okay. Our, our lab this week is on this calculator and algebra practice worksheet that, that you have. Okay. And we'll work on that. We'll wrap it up. And then when you feel ready, right, you'll just take a quiz on it. And that will be your lab grade for that day. It'll just be one of the problems similar to what, what you worked on. Okay. Then the following week's lab starts for real. Okay. Okay, the uh, watch where you're sitting because uh, on Wednesday I'm going to hand out this little template and you're, you're going to be writing your name down on where you're sitting because so on Wednesday, in other words, sit where you want to sit for the next few weeks. 
the reason why I do that is because then I can start memorizing names, right? And I, I just went through everybody's names and I can't remember one of them. So sad, right? So I, I got to get the names down because to keep you awake, I got to wake you up, right? And ask you some questions. So we'll, so we'll do that on, on Wednesday. Let's see. You did the website. Okay, we got this. So I'll, oh, the calculators. Okay, so if you can fill out the calculator sign out worksheet, okay? And the reason why we do this is because, as I said, this class is evolving. And if everyone has the exact same calculator, man, life goes really much, much smoother in here. Yes? Yep. Yep. Oops, sorry. So if you can fill this out. Because we're, everyone's going to be working on the same equation. But we, what, what we found out is the, the issue isn't your guys picking out the equation or even picking out the numbers. It's putting in, ah, it's this. Putting it into the calculator. Because you put in the numbers for all the little variables, but how do you solve for it? It's, all, it's just calculator work. So that's what we're going to spend some time on. So, but if everyone has the exact same calculator for assignments, quizzes, exams, oh man, life is much, much better. So, oh, no, the, uh, with those, kid, he mentioned a TI, blah, 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 right? <laughs> if you use those, you have to know when and when not to use parentheses. There's a whole layer of complication on those. Now, they're nice because you can go back and you can see everything you used. But these, they're solar. You lose it. They're only 10 bucks, right, at Target. And it's, once you get used to it, exponential notation, if you have to do the square, everyone has to do the square root of 5 times 10 to the 8th divided by 6.7 times 10 to the 16th, right? Because the nature has really big and really small numbers. And you got to take the square root of this whole mess, plus 7. Right? If you're all the same calculator, we're going to get through it much more quickly than the alternative. Okay? So that's why we're doing this. Oh, and before you signed it, I probably should have gave you a little heads up. If you read the little bottom of that paragraph, okay, if you don't give me my calculator at the, back of the, at the end of the semester, you're not going to be able to drop as much stuff. And what are we dropping? Well, we're going to drop for sure a lab score for everybody. And we're going to drop at least three quizzes because, I mean, we're taking like 35 quizzes by the end of this semester. So we're going to drop at least like three of them. Okay. So, oh, and why do we drop a lab score? Because, well, you know, people get sick. Lab is tough to make up because everything gets torn down and you have to put up a new lab for the next week. So, you know, everyone, it's going to be hard to make all of them. So we drop a lab for everybody. It's really there also for the guys in sports. But the guys in sports, the bus leaves at, on Thursday at 1 o'clock. It's not just one week. It's like four weeks, right? So the, the dudes in sports just, they got to hit another lab, right? Now, here's my, uh, I prefer you're going to one of my labs, right? If you go to Dr. Mungia, that's fine. It's just that I got to get your lab grade from her, right? It doesn't sound like a big thing, and it shouldn't be a big thing. <laughs> But, you know, when do people get around to doing that? It, what it happens is when I hand out, the la hand out your course grade, you know, I throw out the semester, I'll give you your grades to tell you where you're at. And what the heck, I got a zero in this lab, I did it. Oh, then I got to go get the grade. That's usually how we catch it. But sometimes we'll, we'll be on top of things better. Okay. But, so if, you, if you're going to miss a lab and you don't want it to count as your drop, right, you want your worst lab score to count as your drop, and just hit a different one, okay? And I'm not sure when Mungia's is. You have to go look at WebAdvisor for that, okay? So if you can hand me the, calc the sheets, just pass them down to the end there. Well, oh, I haven't handed these out yet. One, two, three. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> one, two, three. I forgot to hand them out. Three, six, three, four. 
five, six, and two. Okay. Oh, then just write no number on it. Add some. Oh, and if you do lose it, don't run out and buy a new one. Pretty much this works every single time. You go up and you ask me, has anyone turned in any calculators? And I'll give you one. Because it's like a rotating thing. People leave these calculators <laughs> all over the place, and then they turn them in, and then, right? So it's, come and ask me if you have, if I have any. Odds are, I pretty much do every single time. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. I think that's good. Oh, I want to do this first. Okay. The, uh, I say you guys are the last generation of people to see balloons that float. Birthdays, celebrations, weddings, all that stuff. Is this the gas that they put in those balloons? They put in, someone said it, helium. And helium isn't this. Helium is what symbol? H-E. H -E, with a little G for gas, right? And there's no little number on it. So helium gas does... You know, it's really safe, doesn't explode, it floats, it's lighter than air. The problem is that there's only one mine left on the planet that's producing helium gas and people are capturing it. If you, it's not uncommon where, you know, natural gas, the helium is mixed in there, but people aren't capturing it anymore. We used to sell it, they used to capture it because the United States government was buying it. But now the United States government isn't buying it, we're not even going to keep storing it anymore. We might store it in a small amount, but it's pretty much for the MRI machines, uh, other analytical instruments, right, that, that need it to work, not balloons. In fact, in Europe, I don't even know if you can get helium balloons anymore. So the, once the helium is released into the atmosphere, it's, Earth's gravity isn't strong enough to hold it. It just keeps going, 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 it's gone. So you never get it back. So you guys might be the last one. But here, why not use this? Hydrogen gas. Right? The little two means what? There's two, not really about atoms. Atom, right? You got it. You have the right idea. Little H atoms can't be flying around. It has to be H2. Why? Ask nature. Right? And we'll have some insights into that later. But, okay. So this is really two H atoms stuck together in here. And why not use this? Well, we're going to see why in a little bit. I need some help, though. Um, Melissa. Where's Melissa Munoz? Melissa, I need your help. Come on up here. OK. I'm just going to make up a story, Melissa. OK. Melissa, OK, she, uh, she uh, what is she going to do? OK, there's a gazillion lawyers. But she heard about law school. And pretty much you read, you, oh yeah, you're going to be holding this for a while. <laughs> pretty much you read stories in law school, right? And it sounds fun, go arguing your case and things. Okay. But she's thinking, there's a gazillion lawyers out there. I really like the idea of, you know, <laughs> arguing a case. But science and law, ooh, right? If you could be down with a science, you know, pick it. The more complicated, the better, right? You can argue that case so much better than the guy who doesn't have a scientific degree. Had, and I, I had a, a student like this. And if you're science-oriented, you fly through that LSAT because you're really, this is kind of an aside, but you fly through because it's a logic exam. And your logic is really strong with a science degree. So you flew through that. And anyway, he did, did really well. But the point is.
Melissa. Okay, Melissa is going to go to law school, and she wants to uh, get a science degree. Because she's thinking, man, that should really be a good, healthy combination, and it really is. Okay, but, to, but Melissa says, hey, to get that, I gotta, and I'm gonna really put in a lot of time. I'm gonna bother Smith so much that, man, it was all semester, right? It was like, she, Melissa had all these homework questions done except 2.100. She had no clue. She's asking me. Melissa's interact the whole time. Oh, you didn't do that right. Or where'd you do this? How'd you get that? Right? Melissa, Melissa, Melissa. Right? But what is she going to get out of her education? The size of the boom is an extrapolation of what she's going to get out of this class if she has that much gumption. Okay? So, is it going to be a very big boom or a little poof? What do you think? A big boom. It's going to be a big boom. Okay, go ahead. In fact, it's rocket fuel. <laughs> Hydrogen is rocket fuel. It's what the shuttle used to use before they retired it. So what are we doing? Just burn through the rubber, and then the flame will ignite the hydrogen. Yeah. Now, it's going to be loud. No, you got to stick it all the way up on the top. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm so scared. You should be. <laughs> It'll be okay. And how long Get it closer. Closer to the rubber. Get it on the rubber. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Melissa. Oh, it did. It ignited the string. Cool. Wow. All right. Okay. So that's why you guys are the last generation to see floating balloons. Because what's the alternative? Right? We have helium, the lightest gas we can get. Well, not quite the lightest, because it gets even lighter. It's hydrogen. It's even smaller. Right? But the problem with hydrogen is he <laughs> explodes. You don't want him around birthday candles. Right? So, okay, let's go to the next gas. Lithium, solid. Beryllium, solid. Solid, solid. Ooh, here's a gas. But that's our atmosphere. 71% is it, I think? So you fill a balloon with nitrogen, it's just bouncing around on the table. It's a dead balloon. It's full of air, essentially. That's all air is. So that's what we're, that's where we're headed. Okay. So come in and ask questions. Let's take a look at this. So the reason why we're doing this is it seems like a huge majority, this isn't all the equations you're going to be using in this class, but it's a lot of them. And it seems like a large majority of this class is just picking the right equation, which is really isn't that bad. From the question, you plug in all the variables, right? And then you solve the problem. So if we just picked one of these, like pick like we pick PM equals dirt, PM equals DRT. How many variables are there? What do you count, Christian? How many variables are there in PM equals dirt? Five, Five right? So you read through this question, Alejandro, and you're going to get how many variables? If there's five, there would, right, there'd be nothing to solve for. They won't give you five, they'll give you now, if they give you one, it's going to be impossible to solve for. Three. Two. Still impossible. Four. They have to give you four. Every single one. They always give you one less than the number of variables, right? Because you solve for the missing one. It's like that every single time. So they could give you everything but the little d. I don't know. Okay? So what it comes down to is solving this for the little d. And you can do this two ways. You can take the equation and solve it for the little d. They call it algebra, right? And we'll do that. We'll try it. But it's really not how you're going to do it in class. How are you going to do it in class is this. You're going to plug in the numbers, right? And you're going to solve for the missing variable. It's calculator work. 
And that's what we got to get down, right? Calculator work that gets you really efficient at using this. What I want you to be able to do is to see these different things. By the, by the time you're done with all this, you're going to hopefully see an equation and know exactly what to do it on your calculator. Well, that's it. I'm, I don't know, however long it takes, right? Did you get this? Right? If you can do it all in one step like that on your calculator, things are so much less frustrating. You match the answers in the back of the book. You, uh, it takes so much less time. But you get the odds are you get the right answer if you don't write these intermediate steps. So even though I think this is more applicable, it gives you insights if we do some of these first. Okay? So because it's really kind of the same thing, it just looks more complicated this way. So. And what I'd like to do before we do this is I'd like to show you a, I don't know if it's a trick or not. I guess you can call it a trick. But if I had something like AB over C equals D over E F, OK? Which, so I've got Jorge, I've got what, one, two, three, I've got six variables. Or hey, which variable up there you think would kind of be the ugliest one to solve for? Or might be really ugly? Well, it's just one of them. If you had to solve for it, you'd say, oh, God, that looks ugly. Yeah, it could be on the right side. Or even on the bottom, right? Like an E or an F, right? OK. So I want to show you. A little shorthand. Let's just say we have to solve for this guy. Pretend. All we're going to do is move things from one side to the other along the diagonal. Here's the diagonal. Top to bottom. And if I have to solve for f, I got to get them on the top. Either I got to get them on the top on the left side or the top on the right side. It doesn't matter. I got to get them up on the top. So he's not on the top. I got to move him to the top. So all I'm going to do is move f along its diagonal. He's going to be up there with the a, b. Do you see the game? Well, now i got to get rid of the AB. So it's going to go down where the, where the E is, right? And then i gotta get, got to get rid of the C. He's going to go where the D is. D is. You see how you can do all that in one step just by looking at it? And that's what I want you to practice and be comfortable with, because your life is going to be so much easier. Because like I said, look at the majority of your course. OK, let's try it. Solve for the f. Rearrange this guy and solve for the f. So you should set it up this way. Right? What would it look like? Solve for the f. Try to do it without doing any intermediate steps. Right? Solve for that f. Danielle? Where's Danielle? Danielle? OK. What did you do first? She put the F where? OK, she put the F over there. I was going to slow you down a little. She put the F over there. OK. Oh, you know what? Danielle, let's do something else first. Because you can, there really isn't really much logic to this. Right? You just start moving stuff around. But you could put some logic in. The logic in is, what do you not want to move? Do you see what you, what variables do you not want to move? Well, F you got to move, because he has to go up on the top. You don't want to move the E or the D. Do you see that? Because you got to get everything. If the F is on this side, everything else has to be over there. So you don't want to move the D or the E. So I guess that's probably what I should have asked Danielle. Well, not F. I got to have the things that I'm not going to move, I'm going to write in there first. Right? Because I think Danielle might have moved it over here where the C is. That's fine, but then she just has to move it back again. That's kind of an extra step. So if you recognize what you're not going to move and put that in first, I think that's a healthy thing 
to do. And if there is logic to this, that might be it. So, Allison, what could you do next then? What could you do next? Okay, she said move the AB down here. That's a good one. Does it matter, uh, Diana, whether the AB is on this side or that side of the E? Does it matter? No, because 2 times 3 is 3 times 2. Multiplication, division, and order doesn't matter. Okay, that's good. Keep going, Annabelle. What's something else you could do here? Okay, with the, with the D. Yeah, it has to go on its diagonal. It doesn't matter whether it's DC or CD. Okay. Tegan, we're almost there. Yeah, we forgot to put the, uh, <laughs> right. Right. We're done. And you can write a 1 down there, or you can just erase that and just write F equals. Okay. So that's the game we're pretty much playing for multiplication and division. It's a little bit different for addition and subtraction. But. Okay, so let's try this for real here. Dual C, dual C, dual C. Pick a variable, PV equals NRT, just pick one. N, okay, we are going to solve for N, Jonathan. What are you going to do? Uh, we can divide RT by PV. Yeah. You see what he's doing? He's solving for the n. And he said divide the PV by the RT. He's bringing the RT down. And he left the n on that side. That's fine. You don't care as long as it's up on top. So he left the n alone. He brought the RT down on the bottom. Right? PV over RT. How about, uh, let's try this one. Oh. Erica, pick a variable, but you can't pick PT. PA, okay, solve for PA, Clarissa. What would you do? Minus the PV. Yeah, bring it over where the PT is. So leave the PA over here all by itself. It's just, she's subtracting PB from both sides. So PT minus PB. Or we could write it as a negative PB plus PT, right? Either way it works. Let's jump down to this one. Oscar, pick a variable, but not XA. <laughs> NT. NT. Solve for NT, Melissa. Yeah, we got to solve for the NT. Oh, so you, you want the NT. We want the NT. Okay, the now, the, now the NT. I lost my pen here. What the heck? Come on. Huh. Okay, what did she say? We're solving for NT, so bring it where, everybody? To the top, where that XA is, right? What are we going to leave alone? Look at that, he died on me. Man, technology works when it's working, it's great. Well, I can try it this way, huh? Good luck. All right. <laughs> NT. Right? XA has to go down here. And make sure you leave the NA alone, right? Don't budge it. Okay, I'll get this working while you work on the next one. All right? Pick one. Let's jump way down here. The bottom one, P1, V1 over T1, P2, V2 over T2. Let's solve for T1. Solve that one for T1. I'll see if I can get this thing back to working again. at 
Like it all has to be shut down. All right. We're solving for T1. Let's do it over here. So Christian, what did you do first? Solving for T1. T1 over here. Keep going. Alejandro. I'm T2 up here with these guys. But that's what? P1 and a V1 is up there. Okay, we're getting really close. Jorge? What are we missing? Oh, yeah, we do have to move those guys down here, right? Is that it? Or we missed something? Are we good? We forgot about the... Yeah, we did. The T... No, we had? No, we, we're good, aren't we? Oh, because the T one's over there. Yeah. Ah, okay. Let's try some of these then. We have a few minutes left. Let's try this one, number two. Try number two. Solve for M. We're almost done. <coughs> okay. Anybody get an answer? What'd you get? 2.1? Around 2.1? 2.056 or somewhere around there. Yeah. Somewhere around 2.06 people are getting for M. Okay. Now, this is a good example of the goal I really want you to get to, right? Well, first to see how to get the M. What would you have to do first? Without even writing anything down, what would you have to do first? Subtract. You gotta subtract. Because the last step is gonna be having this all by itself, so you're gonna divide by 6.2. That has to be the last step. You have to get 6.2m all by itself. So you subtract this first, hit equals, then divide by the 6.2. So if you can see that, you do all that in your calculator without writing anything down. So much healthier and so much quicker and reliable. right? 12.8 minus the 0.048, hit equals. You can always hit equals, never hurts, but you have to do, have to in this case, then divide by the 6.2. 2.06 or something. Okay. So bring the sheet to lab, and hopefully we'll get this thing working better next time.